Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jack TV, and I'm here at Rachel's and Versa. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing good, doing good. Just chilling. So you want to tell us a little about your music? Yeah, um, where should I start? <laughs> well, how did you uh, start as a musician? Um, I started at a very young age. Not a typical story, but I was four years old, and my parents bought me this Pianosaurus. It was like a dinosaur with keys on it. And Apparently, I used to bang around on it and sing out loud, and I wrote this song called No Hope. So, I was a very dark child. I don't know. It just kind of came with the territory, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so, it all started from there, right? Mm. So, how did it progress? Um, well, it was, it was in my life constantly because my father was a recording artist, and uh, he went under the name Fishkill, and then he's Chris Nelson. He has like eight albums out. And so he was always recording in our house, you know, had his little task cam and, and you know, um, in high school, we took our computer apart and carried it down into the basement to record my EP really? as a uh, senior project. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was the disaster EP and that was 2004. Oh, my God. Wow. That's a long <laughs> yes. Um, but over, over time, you know... Um, I didn't even intend on it being anything. Like, really? I was a child, and mm -hmm. people didn't like me. And I used to sing out loud to myself walking around the playground. Or How could people not like on you? The <laughs> you know what? I don't know. But uh, I've just never really been... Like, people, people have two perspectives on me. They either love me or they hate me. Hmm. And the majority didn't care for me when I was very young. Because so. you were just different from the rest, right? I was very different. In. Absolutely. That's what makes for good art, though. That is true. It was most unique in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so then how did things go along from there, I mean, to where they are now? I mean... Oh, my God. It was, it's been years in the making. Um, I decided I wanted to be officially a musician when I was probably about eight years old. Um, I mean, even in kindergarten, I said I wanted to be a famous singer, but kindergartners, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's right. what you dream of. But uh, when, I, when I was eight... I was listening to um, the radio with my parents and we were in the car and I heard Sticks Underground by the Sneaker Pimps and I said, that's me, that's my sound. And eight years old in the backseat, what do I know about, right. about music? But um, it, that's where it started and you know, it became a progression of things I listened to. You know, as I got into high school, um, I started listening to bands like Evanescence and Collide and Kitty Thieves and really started to shape my sound, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it progressed further, you know, when you got into your college years and, and I discovered Carfax Abbey and that's actually how Forgive Me Not became what it is because cool. I was, um, I was really close with Carfax Abbey. I was one of their, I was probably their number one fan. I've, mm -hmm. I've done everything for that band, carry in equipment, um, watch their equipment, help them set up, help them take That's down. What it's all about. That yeah, I was basically friends. an unpaid roadie. So um, I guess they figured it was like a favor to me. But uh, the wonderful David Jaffre um, at Studio Audio Viral, uh, you know him in Brain Claw, and uh, he's now in Carfax Abbey again. He used he was in them back uh, in Carfax Abbey back in the '90s, and then took a hiatus. But he did that song for me as a, as a favor, as a free recording, kind of a sample. I think he wanted me to like, you know, pay to record with him, but you know, it's, it turned out pretty good. And, and I think we got good response on that it. That song blew up. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Helped get your name out for sure. Like over a thousand listeners. It's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now you were saying before you're trying to get a live band put together so you can bring this live. Yeah, right? absolutely. I am in, this, in the quest right now for live musicians. I know that it's difficult to explain my sound via Craigslist or... Um, so for anyone listening, she's yeah, looking for yeah, some exactly. live members. Um, or drums, etc. and all those websites. So I've decided to kind of like take on the project myself. And I am recording in my home. I'm doing the beats and I'm playing the instruments. And then when I feel like I'm satisfied with the product, then I'll take it to a studio, record the vocals there, and have them like, you know, mix it down and master it. Because I can't get my point across to people when I'm telling them how I sound. But when I actually have a physical product and I say, I sound like this. Then they're like, okay, I can get on board with that. And it's a lot easier so to recruit people. So you complete control. And then mm -hmm. you can... Kind of like Evanescence in their early years where they like had their sound recorded together. It was just Ben Moody and Amy Lee. And then they ended up going and record and um, recruiting band members mm -hmm. to play. 
And then John LeCompte and Rocky Gray ended up being a part of the band permanently, but yeah. And Lucky being here from Philadelphia with a pretty good established scene, I mean, it shouldn't be too difficult to get that all going. No, no, no. Um, really good friends with Mike Saga. I know he'll spin my track. <laughs> yeah, he's actually doing Vortex tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish I could go. I'm, uh, I'm stuck going to work. So Not for long, though, right? No, 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 no. Um, Realize the Sin has become my focus lately. Mm -hmm. um, I actually... Because you took a while off. Yeah, I, I did. I did. Forgive me not hasn't been out since... It's been out since 2012, and I haven't released anything else since, except for Under the Black Light in 2013. And uh, it was... It, there's a lot of things that happened in between. Uh, there was a four-and-a-half-year abusive relationship, and there was... Uh, homelessness didn't help. So uh, that stuff helps inspire. It does. The music that... It definitely does. I've definitely become a much better writer because of it. Um, I think that you need to suffer loss to really appreciate what you have, and to really like have the universe understand your vision and to to move forward. I think that it's it's important. You know, experience is the meaning of life. You know, whether um, positive or negative, it shapes us into who we're ultimately meant to become. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's it's actually very fortunate that I didn't release anything for a while and that I'm coming out now because a lot has changed in the music world. Um, a lot, especially in the pop front, we need kind of a revolution. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to kind of jumpstart something that hasn't been done before and, and get some people who really are talented and really do have um, that lyrical prowess to them to, to kind of get behind it. Mm -hmm. Something a little different for everybody, because, I mean, goth pop isn't really anything out there right now. No, no. Um, that's why I describe it as pop with an edge to people who don't know. <laughs> uh, it's it's basically pop crossed over with metal and industrial undertones. We've got some bands like Aesthetic Perfection mm -hmm. who have kind of gone that way, so... Um, I would say mm -hmm. that if I had to pick a band that I'm the closest related to, um, it would either be In This Moment... Or the birthday massacre. I'm kind of somewhere in between there. But your vocals are a little more clean. Oh yeah, um, so. my vocals are more along the lines of like a uh, like a Lady Gaga or a Madonna or a um, sometimes Amy Lee. It, it depends. Uh, Tori Amos is my idol. I definitely have a lot of a lot of those sounds mm. too. Cool. Cool. And now you have a bunch of tracks that you're just, you know, like an album in the process that you're waiting to release, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had material forever. It's been stockpiling for years. And it, it'll be nice to finally get it all down because uh, I've been trying to record Diary of an Angel since 2009. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it's been an uphill battle, but it's been worth it. And I think... Because of what I had concept for this album, it actually is worth it. Because it is, the album itself embodies the struggle of someone who has been trying to become, you know, a famous singer all of these years. And all of these things that have held her down, all these things have repressed her and, you know, and kept her fighting. And, you know, when you think about a diary... That's, that's what you think. You think of the struggles, you know, you, th you think of reading the pages of someone who has really like lived. And I think that that is so crucial to this record. And it's, it's been a journey, but it has been worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Like the emotions that create this. Oh, that, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot that went into this album, not just, you know, Anybody can record something in like five minutes, mm. but to have that raw emotion of the experience, you know, um, I had this habit when I was really young and I kind of still do where I'll write a song and I don't think when I write ever, mm. um, I just sing something out loud and it, it's because it's based on an emotion that I'm feeling at that moment. And later on something in my life will happen and it will trigger that emotional response and I will actually be reminded of that song. Like I'll hear that song in my head that I wrote mm -hmm. and it'll click for me. It'll, it'll make sense that I predicted this event would happen. Hmm. I wrote about this and I write in a described nature. I don't actually like, you, anybody can write, you know, basic sentences, but I tried to write metaphorically 
And, uh, and again, I'm not even thinking about it. So I'm writing these metaphors and I'm like, what the hell am I singing about? But then it just like comes together and, uh, and it hmm. makes sense. It's fascinating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a little weird. <laughs> it's interesting, yeah, when it Sometimes all comes it creeps me out. And... Sometimes, because uh, there's definitely been moments where I'm like, uh, I predicted this. I shouldn't have predicted this, but I predicted this. Can you give any examples? Or... <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I had a song called "Somebody Not Like You" when I was in high school. I wasn't even in a relationship at the time, um, and it was a very dark song about an abusive relationship where like um she's been kind of like locked inside of her mind for years and and this person just won't let her be herself and she says you know i want to be free i want to be me i want to be with somebody not like you and it didn't really click for me until i got in a relationship in um in 2008 the the one that made me leave and, and move to the city homeless. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe you had stopped your music for a period oh of time. God. I was like, what is yeah. she doing? But it's good that you came back through it, that. It's, so. it's been a struggle. It really has. Like, this, this album has been... It, it is what it is. Diary of an Angel. Like, I have really, really had to fight to, to, to do what I want to do. And, but... So when are you thinking that it'll see the daylight? Do you... Well, year two, just... I it would, comes together. that's, that's, it's going to be kind of like, I would not call it a slow moving process. It's definitely faster paced this time. Um, but I'm focusing on my overall company. Realize the Sin Productions is my company. I sing, dance, model, and act. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm actually treating my company like a day job now, forcing myself to get up and do things. And I'm going to be working on the website and putting together every facet and Rachel Sinversa is obviously number one on the list. Um, although I've been doing much more with my modeling career lately than my music career. Those so trying to just balance it. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, any, any kind of publicity that I can get at this point is good publicity. And you know, when I collect these pictures from my portfolio, they're going to be in it. Um, I'm going to take select ones and make them images for the, the actual diary. So my album has a really cool concept. I've wanted to do this forever, but it's a uh, it's a leather bound diary, and it's got hand scribed lyrics for hmm. the songs that are in the, in the album. And there's going to be like paper clipped images from like photo shoots and like press flowers, and you know it's going to be autographed and all this stuff. Cool. And the idea is I'm actually setting up a Kickstarter and a Patreon, hmm. and the top bidder is going to get the original book. Oh, wow. Um, but the concept of the album itself is going to be basically photocopies of all of the pages that are in it and, you know, of the front and the back, and it's hand-designed, so I, I wanted to do this Something forever. Something a little personal. Absolutely, yeah, because cool. the struggle is personal. You know, this album is so personal. I don't, I don't even know if an album down the line will, will reach what I'm reaching with this album as far as the emotional um, captivity, but... It should be worth it. Yeah, yeah. Now, before we were talking, you said you were doing a lot of networking stuff. You said you went on the Gothic cruise. Yeah, I was on the Oh my it's God, cool. yes. I was on the Gothic cruise um, about, was it a month and a half, almost two months ago? And uh, it was it was really great. We, uh, we went on a seven day, eight night vacation. Um, and it was to Grand Cayman, Belize, Roatan, and Cozumel. And of course, I got wasted in Cozumel. That, that's what everybody does in Cozumel. Did you know they give you shots of tequila at every jewelry store? Really? Yes. Hmm. It's their tactic to get you to spend money. You come in, they're like, "Oh, you want a tequila shot?" And they every every time. And oh, you, you want another yeah, one? I go to it's jewelry like, shops all day. Yeah, that's exactly what I did, and that's why I passed out and missed the masquerade. And I designed my mask for. It. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, something quite interesting happened. Um, Birthday Massacre was on this tour, which is the reason we went. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to see them on the ship, be able to like have the experience of, of being you know in the same room as them. Uh, they've been my favorite band since like 2007. Hmm. So uh, yeah, so that so that was really personal for me. Um, but we're my boyfriend and I are walking along the uh, the outside of the carnival ship that we were on, and we're just doing laps, you know, just talking, and all of a sudden we look down, 
on the deck below us and here's Chibi with like a couple of the members of Diary of, Je of Dreams and uh, a couple of members of the uh, band I thought I wrote in sphere I mm -hmm. think is how they say that but um so I came I came downstairs and we're walking around and they call us over because obviously we're dressed in black so we look like them yeah so you know come, come here come here we, we you know what's your name what's your name and and wanted to involve us in what they were doing and they're having this conversation about um, when they record vocals, what their uh, power stance is when they record vocals. Right. And um, so, like, they, she's she's up there and she's doing this, like, you know, like, not so serious, <laughs> like, power stance, trying to have fun with it, be comedic. And she's like, Rachel, you said you're a recording artist, so, like, what's your power stance? And she wanted me to, like, say something. And, of course, me being me, I you know, took the opportunity and actually sang part of Forgive Me Not. And she's like, whoa, you sound like an angel. And <laughs> she was like, I was not expecting that. And, and we ended up really becoming friends. That's and cool. it, that was that was highlight of my uh, my vacation. That's cool. Yeah, I went on that 70,000 tons of metal cruise a while back. And it's just really cool getting to hang out with all the artists. Oh, yeah. And close and personal. Because they're cool. people. You know what I mean? We all came from the same place. Oh, yeah. You know, just different people, different talents. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, like I said, for for years, I, I went with Carfax Abbey. I was a pretty much their number one fan. I would stand up front row and pointing at them, like you know, this will be me someday, right? <laughs> like that that's gonna happen. <laughs> just a matter of time, right? Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. So now, if people want to find you online, look you up, how do they do that? So I'm updating the website. It's RayElizaSin.com. And then um, rachelsinversa.com will have its own link. I'm going to be updating my Reverb Nation, my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram. Um, Instagram is Ray Eliza Sin right now. It has, it actually does have a little bit of singing on it, just a tiny bit, but um, not not enough yet. But it's then you it's have coming. Some older it's coming. videos on YouTube, right? Yeah, that's that needs to be updated. That's <laughs> got to go. That the the sound guy <laughs> fell asleep, like. He's in the back, nodding off, and I'm going like this in the video, and I'm young as hell, and I, God knows what I was wearing, but I'm going like this, and I'm just trying to get him to turn up the music, and he's asleep on the board, and I'm like, like, so frustrating, it's and then finally he wakes up, first. oh my God, it is, <laughs> for those who know me, it's incredibly entertaining, because they're watching this like, can you believe this girl? Like, this was her first release? This is awful. <laughs> like, it's not a bad song, but the performance is pretty, uh... Yeah, I don't know what I was doing on stage. <laughs> well, I have come have a long way. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've come a long way from there, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very long way. <laughs> do, you, do you have a music video for Forgive Me Not or not? I have a concept. Okay. But uh, I'm not going to share it because I don't want anybody to take it. And uh, I've been talking uh, to a couple videographers about it, so I haven't signed any releases yet um, because I'm being very, very careful. This but there's is... something coming. Yes, and yes. And you even were saying you might want to change the song a little bit. I, that's the thing. I don't know if I want to leave it the way it's been recorded because it's such, you know, a staple and people love it. Um, and also because David Jaffray is awesome. Uh, but... Or give it like an updated twist. I may leave it the way it is and then do like an alternate version on the album as like a bonus track. That's cool. So I, I've been kind of like waffling about that for some time. Um, I now just, you've grown a lot. Since oh my the god, I have next, so. matured so much from that, and uh, the new material is definitely more grown up. So. I'm not sure if it'll fit in with that, so I, I think maybe the original would be the bonus track and the new one. And That's cool. It's, it's, it's still kind of like a like a question mark. I'm, I'm open to feedback, guys. Honestly, I am open to feedback. If somebody has a suggestion, if they like the original Forgive Me Not, you know, let me know. Well, I'll post the know. original onto the description of this video, and then people can click into it and then... And see what they would do, because, you know... Um, and honestly, it would be kind of neat. I thought about doing a remix contest for it, too. That would be fun. So for anyone who watches this, make sure you comment down what you think of her video song. Definitely. Not the video. Not the video. That's... The song. I mean, if you want a good laugh, watch the video. But... <laughs>
I won't put that in. People can look that up. But... Oh my god, it's so awful. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it was good talking to you, and look her up. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.